And welcome to our community. Susie Thomas here with you this morning, joined by Mariana Giacomo, and she is the Community Service Director at the Stark County District Library. Good morning. Good morning. So nice to have you here. There's always something going on at what you call the Smart Store, where everything is free. Tell us yes, a little bit about it. we do. So at the Stark County District Library, we are the Smart Store, where everything is free, and we think a lot about being smart, and we think that one of the best ways that we um, do that is through our Start Smart Early Literacy Initiative. Before uh, before we get on to that, because we're going to want to spend a lot of time with that, uh, there is something brand new at the library, a no-fine policy. That's right. Uh, I'm still blown away by this. Right. How does that work? So it is. It's one, of the, it's one of the ways that we're really trying to eliminate barriers for our customers, and we've been doing it for um, a little over a year now. And uh, so basically what it is is you can check out books, and if you keep them for longer than the two weeks when they're due, I you can bring them back, too. and we're not charging you fines for them. That's unbelievable. Which is great. Yes. So um, so we encourage people to uh, return. They can renew their books as well up to 20 times. So if you have a book that you love and you're, it's taken you a while to read it, you can just keep renewing it. And just as a courtesy, that's nice to do, right? Just yes. so that you know you're letting people read them longer than it, they said that it would take them. Right. They don't have to pay a fine for this, but just to let you know that, yeah, I haven't forgotten you. I still have my book. I haven't finished right. it yet. Right, exactly. Um, and then also, if you know you love that book so much that you decide you don't want to return it at all, you can also reimburse the library for it and keep it. And just buy it. Yes. Like a bookstore. Right. All right. So you did say also sm Start Smart or Smart yes. Start? Start our Start Smart Early Literacy Initiative. Oh, so that really exciting. focuses on the, um, the library providing resources, um, services, and tools for parents to um, help them prepare their children for kindergarten and reading success. So we are um, really just arming parents with the tools they need to um, make sure that they can help their children have the best possible um, start and the best chance for reading and school success when they start kindergarten. Mariana, you are speaking with a former kindergarten teacher. Okay. And back so in the know. day, it used to be we required that they knew how to tie their shoe. Right. It was helpful if they knew some sounds and letters. But we learned the letters and the sounds they make with the letter people in kindergarten. Right. We learned things like numbers and colors and so forth in kindergarten. Children are expected to know so much more than that these days. What what yes. does a child need to know to be able to be ready to start school? Well, one of the things that is very helpful for children to know before they start is to have the six early literacy skills in place. And what this is, it's not teaching kids how to read before they start kindergarten, but it's really just giving them the, the skills that will make learning how to read an easier process. And what would these be? So there's there's six of them, um, and some of, there's, some of them are so simple that parents are probably doing these already, and mm -hmm. they don't even realize that they're doing it. But what we try to do at the library is make sure that parents are aware of what they are so that they can do these things um, more intentionally with their kids. Like, for example, one of the easiest things that parents can do is just teach their children to love books. Mm. Print motivation is actually one of the six early literacy skills, and that is, um, you know, in instilling a love of books in kids. And they can do that in so many ways, just simply making reading part of their everyday routine, you know, setting aside a special time where they can be with their child and read books every day. Um, bringing them to the library and making the library part of their routine is also a great way to teach um, a child to love books letting them pick out books that they want to read at the library. I always say, even if your child wants to check out, you know, a 300-page dictionary of dinosaurs, and you know you're probably not going to read mm -hmm. 300 pages of dinosaurs, you can still use that book to um, develop literacy skills, build vocabulary, and also to, just to kind of um, help them to uh, reinforce the topics that they're interested in. Where does screen time fit into all this? There's a lot of really fun books on your phone that a right. child can interact with, but it's not quite the same thing, I'm guessing. Right. Well, of course, we always, you know, um, love to make sure that parents understand how important it is to, to share books. But there's also a lot of um, really good educational um, things that you can do uh, with apps or with um, you know, educational uh, websites. Mm -hmm. We actually have one that I'm going to talk about a little bit later at mm -hmm. the library. Mm -hmm. So there are things that, you know, you can really use um, to 
build those literacy skills. So as much as they love that, then it's mm. not harmful because that all, almost seems like we only time, okay, you can have 10 minutes of screen time and then we're going to do something real, uh, but it's not harming them? It, I guess it just depends what, what it is that they're viewing. So there are really good educational things that you can do mm-hmm. with that screen time. I think it's just kind of making sure that you're weighing, you know, what it is that they're that they're watching and that if you're interacting with them at the same time and helping them to select things that are educational and that are building literacy skills. And again, the the books, you know, we have so many. Um, really, if a parent does nothing else but other than just read to their child every day, they're really focusing and building all of the literacy skills. You know, they're um, helping build vocabulary. That's one of the literacy skills. And, um, you know, the more words a child knows when they enter kindergarten, the better it will be for them to um, to learn how to read. If a child has heard a word somewhere in their first five years of life and they go to read that word and they're sounding it out, then they'll have a, it'll click in their head that they have already heard that word somewhere before. So it's easier to, to read that word if you've already heard the word. Kind of the way we all learn when we are yes. just encounter or a brand new word. Exactly. It is kind of the I've way we all learn. Mm-hmm. As long as it's been used correctly, that That's helps. Right. <laughs> what else can parents do? Anything else that parents can do to make sure they're ready? Yes. Well, um, one of the things is um, the narrative skill is really important, and that's um, a child's ability to uh, like tell a story or to sequence things and be able to tell what happened first, next, and last. Reading is a great way to do that. If a child um, has a book that they want to read over and over and over again, then go with that, you know, keep reading it. I remember when um, my oldest son was little, he had a book that he wanted to read like every night and we read it every night for a year. And that's okay. The parent may get a little bored with it, but pretty soon (laughs) the the child will be able to, uh, you probably uh, have experienced that. Um, Pretty soon the child will be able to um, tell you what that story is and be able to piece together what happened first, what's in the middle what happened next. And another thing that you can do with that too, there's just really simple everyday activities that build that kind of skill too. For example, if you're having lunch and you're going to have peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for lunch, if you build, bring your child into that activity and walk through what you need to do first, you know, we're going to get the bread and the jelly and the peanut butter and we're going to take one slice and put the peanut butter on and then the jelly and put it together and we're going to put it on a plate and you know, keep doing that and then at some point ask your child to tell you how to make that peanut butter and jelly sandwich actually builds that sequencing skill that is really important when they start kindergarten. Now, why is that important? Is that because stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end? Exactly, and it helps with comprehension. So that Mm. um, narrative storytelling skill, Mm -hmm. actually, if a child is able to figure out what comes first, next, and last, it helps with their reading comprehension as they grow, um, go through school. Because not only do we want our kids to be able to read the printed words on the page, but understanding is such an important part of it in the reading comprehension. So that's one of the things that skill does. Oh, absolutely. You've got some great cards, uh, just in case someone's driving along saying, wait, I can't write all this down. Um, How can we, you help us remember these things? So um, if you stop in any of our um, Stark County District Library locations, you can ask for a set of literacy cards. And um, we have a set for babies, a set for preschoolers, and even a set for um, children that are ages um, five through nine. So what they do, uh, some of the literacy skills I just talked about, all six of them are on these cards. Um, There are also tips for parents to reinforce the different skills. There's um, activities on the cards that you can do, too, just suggestions for little things that you can do um, at home with your child to build the different skills. And also suggestions for books that reinforce each of the skills. Do you recommend that there's like a a little place that parents go and almost have... preschool with their children? That's a great idea. You know, one of the things that we do, and I think it's actually mentioned in the cards, is having that little special um, book place for your for your child. And whether it's a place where you go and read with your child or a place where they can go and look at books by themselves, um, that, that's a great suggestion, keeping, all of, keeping everything in one place and having that be their little place where they can go to spend time with books. Another great thing that you can do with books also is put them in the toy box. And then that way, um, a child associates books with the fun things that they that they mm-hmm. like to do, and they can go and they can find their books in there as they're looking for their toys as well. You're absolutely right, though. There's always the one that they want to hear over and over yeah. and over again. It just almost makes you crazy, and you'd rather hide it than put it in the toy box. <laughs> but um, but that's so important, isn't it? It really is. It is, and and it's it's okay. The more they the more they do that, the better it is. Well, I love how you said before we went on the air, how you mentioned that parents are the first and best teacher. Um, Tell us a little bit about that philosophy. Well, it really is true. Parents, grandparents, caregivers, whoever that child is spending most of their 
time with, um, because they're with them for, for so much of their day, that really gives the, the parent or caregiver or grandparent the opportunity to uh, really make, um, make a difference in the child's life and really be the child's first and best teacher. But there's help, because if you're getting tired, and you've That's read right. that book 400 times, and you, and you need help, um, there's That's always right. exciting things going on at the yes. library. So many wonderful programs, and story time would be just one of those. Talk about that. That's right. So um, story time is so much a part of the fabric of the of the library. They've been going on for as long as I can remember, um, and probably as long as our listeners can remember. But it's really a great opportunity for um, for you to have your child be in that social s- situation. And a lot of times, it's a child's first um, experience in a social setting. It's a great way for children to listen to books and to have those early literacy skills um, embedded in them through listening to the stories, through the rhymes, the songs, the finger plays. Um, a great way to learn about new books and be able to share you know, new books by new authors that are coming out. It's great for the parents and caregivers as well because it gives them an opportunity to uh, meet other, other parents and caregivers and for them to chat and have that social time as well. And then um, the greatest thing I think too is it, it makes the library really part of your routine. So mm-hmm. if you're going to story time every week then and your child gets used to that and you may want to take a, time, a day off and your child might say, no, we're going to story time today. <laughs> so that, and that's wonderful. So um, it, it helps to make um, build that library as part of your routine and into your life by coming once a week for story time. And give us an idea of behind the scenes of something like that, because you are preparing for a number of different age groups, and right. yet somehow you're able to keep it relevant for the next group coming through. Exactly. So we have story times for, um, we have baby story time, um, toddler story time, preschool story time, and even family story time. Um, and like you said, we have um, you know such talented librarians that work at the library that are able to um, have those, uh, the activities that are incorporated into each of those different story times relevant for the child that's attending. So our baby story time is going to look much different than a preschool story time. Um, and baby story time is great. Um, and a lot of times I'll hear parents say, oh, well, they're too young they're not really getting anything out of it but I totally disagree I think um, if you've ever seen a baby at at baby time it's just wonderful how their faces light up when you see when they see a book or when you're doing songs and finger plays with them and it's a great way also for parents to learn some of these things that maybe they've forgotten about like um, when you're when you're a new mom sometimes you may not remember all the words to your nursery rhymes or the songs that you used to like when you were you are digging back decades right trying to remember exactly (laughs) so it's a new or you know the mother goose nursery rhymes right all of those things are so great to start doing with a baby right from the time they're born so baby time really offers um parents an opportunity to be able to go back and model those things with their with their children where uh, can people find out all the details as far as times and days for each of these specific story times they can visit our website the starklibrary.org um, they can also um, Everyone should have re- everyone in our service area. We just sent out our new smart guide, which is a listing of all of our programs um, for the next three months. Um, and our, again, our website has our event calendar, or they can just call one of our libraries, and we'd be happy to let them know where, um, where and when all of our programs are. How fun is it for you to be able to uh, come here today and talk to all, about all these exciting things? And I know we've got a couple more really exciting yes. things uh, to talk about in our second half. But what does that mean to you personally, what you get to see every day? I, I really love it. Um, I, I really feel passionate about early literacy and making sure that parents um, and caregivers really know everything that's available out there to them. And I think it's so important as the library that we are, we're so committed to making sure that we have the resources to help support parents. It's really a key part of what what we are and what we do so um, I love when I'm able to connect with a parent and be able to um, you know talk to them about story time or give them the literacy cards and make them aware of um, just the world of possibilities that they can share with their children and that we can connect them to through the library and our services. Now we know we've got some wonderful kids in our community and uh, you have such wonderful resources for them. We're speaking with Mariana DiGiacomo from the Star County District Library. We'll be back with more after these words. You're listening to our community.